Shabbat, Shabbat, Shalom, Sen Salam, Shalom, Chabarim, Shalom to the Rastafari Chabarim, my Ethiopian Hebrew peoples, my black Jew, black Jewish peoples, my Hebrew Israelite peoples, you know, and and good people, or I'll say righteous people, because no one's very good in that sense, but those seek to do good, right, for themselves and their fellow man, according to Yahweh, truth, and life. So here, going to touch on this, um, Rob Rack presents the seed of the father is a false doctrine. This was recently um, broadcast, streamed on uh, Sarnetta by Sarnetta Studios. And I like to heal up, you know, Sarnetta, Sarnetta Studios. Sometimes, you know, we are critical, you know, and we don't agree with certain things, and we bring it out to the Chavarim. A few times we record you know, certain vlogs or audios that we share on the podcast, check out the Rastafari podcast on the Blog Talk Radio, Rastafari podcast, and look forward to Rastafari TV. Hail up I and I Digital Angel. Yes, I sister for nine sunlight. That platform there, having our own, building our own platform. You hear a lot of ones talking about. You know, whether we on like the YouTubes or whether we on the Facebook, um, Zuckerman, Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg and all that stuff that, you know, he's been exposed to do so forth and so on. But this is not what that's about. Just a kind of little intro right here, here, here. So the Rob Rack presents the seed of the father is a false doctrine. Now the Chabarim know that we have already addressed this and it was good to hear a lot of the points that we've addressed in different, you know, sabbatical studies, also on the podcast and the various different audios over the past almost 20 years, we've addressed these. Now, some of the Habarim, some of the brothers and sisters say, well, you know, a lot of folks, they be eating and they had ate off of what we have posted and published, you know, one way or the other, because it's interesting that we start to hear ones and ones talk about the same thing. You know, about like not to abhor, you know, abhor Esau, you know, <laughs> the Edomite, you know, because Esau is your brother. Or, you know, to um, abhor, you know, the 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 Kemetic or the, the Mizraim, the Mitzramite, the Mitzri, you know, the Egyptian or the so-called Kemite. But now, it seems after many years, ones and ones, I guess, are catching up, whether they're doing their studies. Like others, our brothers... And some of the sisters and brothers say that, you know, what you was talking about, I heard this one say over here. What you talked about before, I heard this one say that. Well, if that's the case, if it's because of what we have published, publishing the good news, the gospel, the kingdom, and the king of kings, that is good. Whether they have eaten, <laughs> you know, whether they've eaten, you know, seen a video or seen a video repost or someone who have checked out the video have kind of run with the teaching, hey, so be it, right? So so be that right there. The, the good thing is, right, if they've picked up on the truth from our podcast, you know, which is, you know, a chosen few, right? You know, we just seek to educate, you know, those who are called, you know, and choose to hear, even though we have the other platform with some 40-something um, thousand and you know, our our views were steadily increasing and everything like that. And then you just took it down. So be it. You know, sometimes we've touched on certain social issues that, you know, were in the news, you know, in the, in the news feed. And a lot of times you get ones that would subscribe, you know. But those who seek to, you know, like, share, definitely share and subscribe right here, here, here. You know, the Ras, the Fari, the Yehudin. So here, let's touch on this particular some commentaries, a few comments. First of all, we think that the first part, right? We was listening to it for maybe the first maybe half hour to roughly 45 minutes or so. And Rob Rack really brought together a lot of very important points that prove that this um, latter day, right? This latter day Israelite, this latter day, and I emphasize latter day, I emphasize 70 AD, I mean 1970. Did I say 70 AD? Yes, but like 1970 AD Israelites. So we're just going to do a quick video. You know, basically a lot of things that we, I and I have talked about and the Chabarim know this. Those Chabarim, those fellows, you know, friends, you know, friends, right? And even the friends of the family, the Beta Rastafari that have trodden I and I and we 
for, you know, you say more than 10 to 20 years, because it's about how long we've been on some of the social media, podcasting and broadcasting on various, you know, our own various different platforms, you know, before the haters come with the hatred <laughs> and try to get it taken down. But as we often remind ones, you know, like, share, subscribe, and also save, download these for your, ar your, your, your archives, for your archives. Right, for your video archives. So on a lot of the different Sabbat and sabbatical, Shabbat and Shabbatical, Rastafari, Shabbatical, Sabbatical studies, the RSSs previously, you know, we have touched on these various points. I mean, but we loved the part, I mean, many parts of what he was saying because it was hearing someone else articulate those things, right, that we know, right, that we saw in the scripture and very few others, right? So even though ones might get the credit for this, so be it, right? So be that right there. The, the thing that it should show others that they need to tune in, right? But a lot of people don't like to, <laughs> don't really like to hear the truth. The truth is an offense, but it is not a sin, it's not an ugly. So it kind of has been brought together. But we like what Rob Rack did. We saw some other, um, uh, I can say, um, Sarnetta, I don't know if it was an interview or whether it was like a pre-debate or something like that with some other ones and ones and and um anyway that was that but this this right here this right here 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 the false doctrine right of the latter day Israelites by Rob Rack you know and to share this with our Chabarim you know the Achim Achim our brothers and our fellows you know to check it out you know download it save it now but at the end, at least at the end of his presentation, <laughs> you know, he begins off, Rob Rock, he says, like, he's doing this for, you know, I guess the black man, the Israelite men, and the black woman, you know, the sisters, you know, because of this false doctrine that some of the latter-day Israelites, like ISUPK, and also the others that come from that same latter-day, I keep emphasizing latter-day Israelites, because they, they, they're like a broken branch, from the commandment keepers, the Ethiopian Hebrew congregation of the living God. They're broken branches from that, even the whole connection with um, Eba, e Eba Yomim, uh, a.k.a. Um, um, Abba Bivens. Well, that's a whole other point right there. But at the end of Rob Rack's um, presentation, he gets really disrespectful, respectful to, um, to uh, Kedista Mariam. Right to 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 Saint Mary, Holy Mary, the Black Madonna, to the Black Madonna, the Black Madonna, and you best know she's a black woman. Right, she's a black woman, and also to the Holy Spirit, to the Ruach Hakadosh, the Holy Spirit. Right, he says in the beginning of it, it's interesting to compare what he says in the beginning, and then if you scroll forward, like to maybe like the forty-five minute mark, I think the whole thing is about a little less than two hours. And then he was going in some question and answer. That's why I paused it right there. I said, wow. I said, I still agree with what he, he put forward in the beginning. You know, he first, I think, began with the numbers, the part in numbers. And, and the, the fellow Torah scholars, the Torah, we like to call it Torah, Rob Rack, not Tanakh. Find Tanakh in the scripture. If you really look up Tanakh in the scripture, you'll find it has something to do with the Canaanites. Right, Tanakh is a, a lot of the acronym for the T in Torah and the N in Nabim or Navim and some of the latter day um, Yehudi and, and, and latter day Hebrew, so to speak, speech, you know. And the K, the KH is for the Chetubim, Chetubim, the Ketubim. So the Torah, T, the, the uh, Nabim, the prophets, Nabim, Navim, some say, and the Ketubim, the T, N, and K. So you hear one talk about the Torah and the Tanakh. But the Tanakh is not, the Tanakh is something that has been, is a latter day insertion. So if you really get to the real studies, you'll recognize that and maybe y'all can do a video or presentation on that as well. We've already touched on that. But the part that we like to look at right here is to, you know, to say, Toda, Tawada, Toda Raba, give thanks, do give thanks, enough thanks to how he went into the first part of the presentation regarding this um, latter-day um, um, doctrine, this falsified, let me say it's a falsified doctrine. There is something to do with the father's seed. Don't, don't get it twisted. 
right? But the way that certain Latter-day Israelites, ISUPK, some of the other alphabet camps, they all kind of come out of the One West camp, if you really know the history of, you know, um, the, the Latter-day Broken Branches, because they're Broken Branches from the Commandment Keepers, the Ethiopian Hebrew Congregation of the Living God. That's where the real roots is. And you notice how many of them will hate on the Ethiopians, and then they'll go after the Zondervan. And let me just say this right here, that Zondervan, that Zondervan um, concordance, that's COINTELPRO. Let me just say it right now, say it loud, and, you know, don't have to be proud about it, but the truth is an offense, but not a sin. That Zondervan right there, it is COINTELPRO. You think COINTELPRO stopped back in the 70s or, or what, the 80s maybe? No, it's still going on. This COINTELPRO New Millennium. And a lot of the falsifications that have crept in to a lot of the, you could say the, the mega, the mega camps, the mega Israelites, the mega Hebrew Israelite camps have to be weeded out. And so the first part of Rob Rack's uh, presentation, I think goes a long way, right? It goes a long way to help weed that out, right? So we really agree with the brother, you know, and not because like we really learned something from this. Not that we can, you know, you know, we can, but it's because these are, topical themes that we have touched on. Ask any of the Chabarim, ask any of the Rastafari Chabarim, any of the Rastafari Yehudim, any of the Rastafari Jews among I and I, right? Rastafari Hebrews amongst I and I. We, when we go through the Torah readings and feedings, right? The sabbatical studies, the Shabbat strong, we go through it, um, what they call fine tooth comb, you know, fine tooth comb. It's not just, you know, grabbing a verse over here, grabbing a verse over there, and we go through the Hebrew, Right, get to the Masoretic Hebrew. Right, we compare also with the Ethiopic, the the, the Gutters, and also the Royal Amharic. And Garfield's a liar. Garfield, I have to say this right here because Garfield tried to say that the Ethiopic Bible is the Septuagint. No, that's the latter day. Right, the latter day. You see, there was earlier scriptures that come from the Solomon and Sheba time, and also what was very good about Rob Rack's presentation. Right, what happened to um, Shlomo, Shlomo HaMelech, to King Solomon with all those wives. You notice that all the different wives that he had, the foreign, strange, outlandish woman that King Solomon had that, that caused him to go astray. He even mentioned the Egyptian and the different Canaanites, the Moabites, Ammonites, Isaites, Tanites. It, it, it never mentioned the Ethiopian. Check, check. But if you understand what is in the scriptures, I'm talking about like in Kings and, and, and even in, in Chronicles, if you understand that well, then you can recognize the cover and the guest, that link, right, with the uh, Israelites of Ethiopia, right, and thus also with the commandment keepers, right, Ethiopian Hebrew congregation of Elohim Hayim. That's the real roots, right, of the true Israelite teaching. Right, the true Israelite teaching from, we can say, back in the days, almost like a hundred years ago, the Roaring Twenties. Now, yes, they were called the Moabite, you know, Zionist Jews. And people say, why did they call themselves Moabite? Were they Moors? No, you have to recognize that the Israelites in the Bible, if you study Deuteronomy, the last place before they crossed over to enter into the Promised Land, right, was the plains of Moab. Right, the plains of Moab. And if you study some works like J. A. Rogers, a very good historical, you know, historical accounts, half the story from our own scholars. See, a lot of the latter day black Hebrew Israelite doctrine, like from the ISUPK where the counterfeit and the false doctrine creeps in, they reject our own scholars. Our own black scholars. So we have to recognize it's not these these guys today might recognize the Israelites and there are certain true points to what they teach. But we're very grateful, you know, to this uh Sarnetta Studio presentation and to Rob Rack. And also we have to say this right here. The first part of Rob Rack's presentation, like I even said to um Isha Shali, you know, <laughs> you know, it's I Nai Isha, I Nai Woman, I Nai Wife, I said I said he 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 blew the bunker, he busted up the bunker with that right there, you know? Now, it's true that we've touched on all of the particular areas of Scripture with the Chabarim disciples and pointing to the same essential key points, but how Rob Rack brought it all together, how he brought it all together in this particular presentation that was targeted at the, um, the seed of the Father, right? The seed of the Father is the false doctrine, 
It's not true. You can check that out. It's on the Sonetta um, Studios. But here, we'd like to say after that wonderful first part presentation, there was also the point that Rob Rack had made. I think he was looking at the Ezra scripture. You know how one talk about, oh, how they want to, you know, return to land and come out of this. And he's like, no, you don't, you know. And then he pointed to Ezra. Now, these are areas of scripture, and Rob Rack is correct with this, that a lot of Hebrew and Israelites and ones who profess that they're Hebrew and Israelites, they don't like to deal with this, these areas of, we could say, um, of the breach of Shana, right? The breach of Shana, right? Or like the old covenant scriptures, right? Or the Hebrew Bible, you know? They don't like to deal with those areas like Ezra, Ezra and Nehemiah and Nehemiah, right? Because it becomes very, very clear. Even for more than, than just the point he brought forward, we can even segue with the Ethiopia point, right? The Ethiopia point, right? Now, the Ethiopia point, of course, we're going to have to get into that a little bit more, at least on this platform. Some of y'all know we already addressed it on the previous platform. Some of y'all got the videos. And um, look forward to Rastafari TV. Rastafari TV coming on strong, our own platform. You know, support the platform there, Rastafari TV. Um, and also support, you know, um, the... Uh, the the matriarch right of I and I social media I, I and I digital angel sister for I sunlight and the family and the co-laborers is coming forward coming forward with building and working for our own platform so ones who are missing like the Rastafari sabbatical a lot of the previous videos that were up there on that previous channel for almost like over about ten or so years you know the best of the best you know I'm gonna revisit. You know, maybe even re-edit and add even a little more content to a lot of those videos, but seek to get those videos up there again. So those who are familiar with that already know that we've addressed many of these areas of Scripture. But it's interesting when it talks about the strange, the strange woman, right? And we could actually go through exactly who the Scripture mentions. It doesn't mention anything about the Ethiopian. <laughs> it doesn't mention anything about the Cushim. In fact, Amos 9 and 7 says, Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, the B'nai Kushim unto me, O B'nai Yisrael? But how they will, you know, put forward this false doctrine, right, and false doctrines alongside true doctrines. Now, this is not to say that, you know, the Latter-day Israelite camps, ISUPK, and, and let me just heal up Captain Azania. Because we were together on the platform, what you know about God and his chosen people. That there was a platform that was hosted by um, our, you know, a brethren of ours, uh, um, Lawrence Davis. Ross Lawrence, right? Ross the Lawrence, I guess he calls himself, but Brother Lawrence Davis, right? And even those audios and those podcasts is very, very good. We had a, a very good time chopping it up. Had a brother from the ISUPK, Captain Azania. He was on that platform with I and I, and we agree on the core, on, on, on the core of who we are, right, as, as black people over here in the Americas and the Caribbean. But there are some differences, and to these differences, right, the reasons for our differences with ISUPK was very well articulated by Rob Rack in his presentation on Sarnetta Studios. Now, towards the end of his presentation as we mentioned he gets really um disrespectful against the black madonna right against this mariam against the black madonna what if we say black well she's black of course she's black i mean we even have testimony of what she looked like right see see y'all are depending i say some of y'all are depending on just the western gentile information right and maybe translation that the white man and europeans do Right? And yes, we also have depended on some of that, but then we get to the root of the manuscripts, right? the other side, the other half of the story. Most ones in the West would not even know about the Book of Enoch, even before the Dead Sea Scrolls were found, right? because they were preserved right? among the Israelites of Ethiopia. That's what the Bible reads that way. Right? Princess shall come out of Egypt, Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to God. I in a Psalm, what's that, 68, verse 31 in the KJV, and also Psalm 87, verse 4. Right? I'll make mention of Rahab and Babylon to them that know me, behold, Philistia and Tyre, with Ethiopia. Im Kush, Ze Yulad Sham, Ze Yulad Sham. This was born there, this man was born there. 
All right, so there's various areas of the scripture that makes that prophetic link. And our ancestors and elders, right, who were the first proclaimers to the so-called Negro, right, the so-called Negro, right, in Ethiopia also was known as Negro or the Negroes of Ethiopia, right, that link with the Negroes of Ethiopia are the Israelites of Ethiopia, right, from that Solomonic time and forward. But that right there is going a little bit more feel let's just focus on this because some of my fellow Habarim, you know have told i that they like the podcast like the content information but sometimes they would say we ramble so not to ramble right here 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 so rob rock we like what you presented right if you get to check this or somebody gets to check this and let you know we really like what you presented you know tawada toda toda rabba you know enough 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 do give thanks enough thanks for that right um but now, when he says in the beginning of the podcast, he says something in the beginning of the podcast, right? And in the beginning of the podcast, um, Rob Rack, he says um, that he's doing this, especially for the black woman, right? The black woman. Because what, he's, what he proves from the scripture, right, is a couple of key points. He goes firstly into the Numbers chapter... Numbers chapter 1, right? It's usually many of the latter-day Israelite camps, ISUPK, and the other ones that come out from the One West. And the One West would be considered in the chronological order of things of the latter-day Israelites. You know, you could say, if not the home of the truth as they self-profess themselves, but the origin for many of the other, like, you know, IUIC, the, the you know, GMS, the GOCC, so forth and so on. But now, we're not commenting on the various different, you know, of our fellows, you know, amongst the other, the other Israelites. Sometimes we refer to them as the ain't right Israelites, and they ain't right on this particular point, you know, because... The seed of the woman also matters. Uh-oh. <laughs> Did we say it? Yes, we said the, the Bible says that. Right? The Bible says there's a seed of the woman. And what's very interesting in Isha Shali, when I say Isha, Isha is like, is like woman, wife. Isha Shali, my Ishti, Ishti. Another way of saying it, Ishti. Like my wife, she pointed out to me, she said, um, another point is, too, that the seed of the, the woman or, like, the mother matters because you'll notice, like, in Ezra, right, and also Nehemiah, but especially in Ezra, those um, returned Israelites that had foreign women, foreign wives, that one of the points that was made was that their children did not speak the Yehudit, the Yehudit. What do you mean by the Yehudit? The Yehudit right, is the language of the Yehudi, the language of the Jews, you have to remember that the ten tribes had had went into in this like 700s, you know, BC. They by the king of uh, Assyria uh, took them into um, captivity, and they were never to return. Right? They were never to return. The lost sheep of the house of Israel. But then, some hundred or so years later, right around like 500, right BC, we get the southern kingdom, the king of Babylon, right, then takes us into captivity, took our ancestors, the black Jews, the Yehudi, right, the Yehudim, right, the Hebrew, the Yehudim, the Judahites, took them, and then there was a return after 70 years, right, that was to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, Jerusalem, as well as to rebuild the Hekal, the Hekal, the temple, the temple like Solomon's temple, temple of Jerusalem, so forth and so on, right, and at the time when they had returned, many of the princes, Many of the priests, the Kohanim, many of the Lewim, many of the priests, the, the Levites, and the Nassim, 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 the princes of the people, you know, the, 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 the ones of a name. You know, he made a very good point about that, that ones are following these ones with this falsified doctrine, saying that, well, you are Israelite, depends on what your father is. He made a very, very good presentation there. Not to get into detail, but hopefully you'll be able to check it out for yourself, the presentation. Then, when he made that presentation, forget the exact people that he used, but this black man that had like a redhead son, right? Because he had like a white wife, right? And then that that one did what his father did and married a white woman. And then his son looks like, you know, like a, like a, 
I call it Dennis the Menace. Forgot what Rob Rack called the son. He's like a Dennis the Menace type and everything. And um, I said to myself, when I saw that part, I said, that right there is how these other ones who call themselves Jews got into the picture too. This is also what happened to the black nobility right, that was in Europe that's testified by all the art and facts that they try to suppress right, or give like some false narrative to. You know, that's why I mentioned J.A. Rogers' book, Nature Knows No Color Line, for the, the documentation. You know, the documentation, both going to terms like Negro from, from nigger, nigger or Niger, nigger, that was going back to the Latin. And then we have the, the Greeks who call those melanated people Ethiopian, right? The Ethiopian connection, Tacitus, the Roman historian, also testifies to the Jews that he witnessed and saw because he lived around the time of 70 AD, the destruction of the Temple of Jerusalem. He says that they were of the race to say like what sort of ethnicity, what sort of seed they were. They were of the race of the Ethiopians to testify that they were Negro or black people and the connection of Negro and Ethiopian according to the ancient Greco-Roman, even when we get back into the real scholarship, these are interchangeable. That proves that the Zondervan Bible um, concordance, right, is calcified, it's based on the calcified pineal gland, but it's, it's false, it's counterfeit, it's COINTELPRO. But that's one of the main evidences that you find that a lot of the latter-day Israelites will point to, and it's kind of ironic, right, that they kind of point to that, but then when you recognize that COINTELPRO you know, there's a COINTELPRO new millennium, right? That's this new millennium version. So what Rob Rack and Sonetta is doing right here it exposes that as well. So the other peoples or the strange woman that some of the Israelites had, that was very, very interesting right there, right? Because that testifies to what happened even in Europe. This is why when some people say that the Queen Elizabeth is like one six, some say like she's one six black, and then they go back to Charlotte Sophia and to other um, documentation when the black nobility ruled Europe, right? Because remember, the Israelites were scattered to the four corners, so-called, the four corners of this earthly plane, the true cross, north, south, east, west of this earthly plane. That means that not only did many of the remnant peoples after 70 AD flee into, you know, south into like Ethiopia, like east of the river Nile, some of them cross the river Nile. You know, when, once you cross the river Nile, you enter outside of that Abrahamic promised land that we have in Genesis chapter 15, and you enter into Hamite, right? So-called Ham or Hamite land, right? But that being that right there, we still want to just, just take a couple of moments to, you know, um, say Toda and point out where we know that Rob Rack was right and accurate. But even when we see those lists of the different foreign, like strange women, strange wives, you find no Ethiopian there. If you believe some of these, um, like the ISUPK and some of the other, you know, Latter-day Israelite camps, they'll make you believe that. So when you start to look at, well, what they say, where their so-called roots come from, the link with Abba Bivens, the real doctrine, the real teaching that was taught, and then what's being taught today, and then look at a presentation like what Rob Rack shows in the very beginning of his presentation. Like you say, he was doing this for the black woman, too, because a lot of these ones are marrying strange, you know, wives and wives of other, you know, mixed and strange people. And I know this might bother some ones and ones, but like you said, that they're going to be upset with him. But really, who they're upset with is, 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 is God or, or, you know, is, is Hashem, is Yahweh. You know, they're really upset with the Most High because this is to be an Israelite. You're saying it's based on the laws, statutes, and commandments. And he said he was going to stay within the Bible. Right? And for the most part, for the first maybe 40, 45 minutes, he did so for the first 45 minutes. Then he went into, he crossed over into the New Testament and got really disrespectful against the black Madonna. As well as, some might say, blaspheme the Ruach Kadosh, the Holy Spirit. I just have to point it out. They say open rebuke is better than secret love, right? You know, so we are expressing, you know, our love for our brother and for the work that he presented in the presentation. 
but at the same time, we're reproving right, what we know is inaccurate. In fact, he said, you're going to stick to the Bible. And, and Isha Shali, she reminded me, she said, she said and, and that's where he, he veered away. That's where he went off from the Bible because he started putting in a lot of his own opinion. You, okay, here's what you got to recognize, right? Um, Sarnetta, I want to give some credit to Sarnetta right here. Now, the Habarim know that, you know, we've gone in where we know he was off of things. But also the Habarim, I and I fellows would know that, you know, I and I brethren would know that we also have said, well, here he is, he's correct here. You know, because that's that's how we read Torah, that if one is correct with something, even if you don't like something else about, say, your brother, but if he is right right here, he is right. Don't say that if, if you don't like this about him and he's right over here, you're going to say, well, he's right, he's wrong, because then you become a deceiver, then you become a liar, right? So Sanetta needs to get some credit right here because Sanetta was trying to bring out a true point when Rob Rack had went into... You know, Rob Rack had went into the New Testament section. He was going to sum up his point. He used a still from um, Black Jesus. You know, that, that Black Jesus, uh, I don't know if it's a Netflix or something like that. You know, that this, this, this popular series and everything. Actually, we have not even watched a single episode as of yet. Some of y'all probably have checked it out. I don't know whether it's good or not or whatever. You know, but you know, when I saw him wearing that woman's wig, I said, this, this is too much right there. Even if they're saying Black Jesus, this is a, just another Cointel Pro, you know, on a certain level. But it might be funny, it might be humorous. But he went into that and said, keep calm. You know, I'm not a Jew. And then had, you know, that actor playing Black Jesus there. And then he went into his kind of New Testament rant. Right? And as he begins off going through the genealogy, one of the genealogy, and most of the Hebrew Israelites can't even discern which genealogy is which. Because the genealogy in Matthew is not the same as the genealogy in Luke. But which one is which? Well, I mean, which one is which? One of them is Joseph's genealogy one of them is mary mariam's miriam's genealogy which one is which i just point that out right there we get into another video give one's time to do their own research but rob rack he goes into the genealogy you know he goes into the genealogy of um that in matthew matthew's genealogy and he gets to a certain point where we talk about, I think, Jacob and Joseph. And he said, well, right here was a good place, a good section, you know, where he could have, right? Or like, like the, the Bible writer, Matteo, Ma Matthew, where Matthew could have put in right there. You know, they could have put in that and Jesus, you know, or the father of Jesus, Joseph was the father of Jesus, but they, but they don't do that. So he begins to interpret you know, the New Testament narrative according to what is in the Bible, right? And at a particular point, this must have inspired Sarnetta to, to speak. And Sarnetta began to speak about, like, the Holy Spirit and what he thought about some of the interpretations of, like, Joseph. You know, Joseph is not Yeshua's father. I think Rob Rack has agreed on that, right? Um, Sarnetta was agreed on that, but he was trying to bring out a point, right? And at, <laughs> um, Isha Shelley, you know, um, my Isha says that, you know, kind of trying to save him, you know, Rob Rack for a moment, you know, and what he was saying. But then, you know, Rob Rack continued his presentation. And, um, you know, I, I think there was was the worst part of his presentation because there he, he went away from what he said he was going to do in the beginning. All through, he said in the very beginning of it, he said he's going to stick with the Bible. He's only going to go outside of the Bible, the direct scripture, you know, for, you know, getting into some words, like some Hebrew words. And nothing I'm happy about because those who know I and I, you know, know that we're some of the first I say maybe not the first first, but at least in this group of black people in the Bible, one of the first to really go into the Strong's concordance and really get into the Hebrew, you know, the key words for the context of translation, the context of understanding translation. But now it seems like at least on Sarnetta's platform, every other person is talking about the, the Strong's concordance or, or getting into, you know, the blue letter Bible. 
right? And that's something that over 20 years, when we first even got on to like the YouTubes, we were speaking about the Blue Letter Bible and helping ones and ones utilize that as a tool in the interlinear Bibles as well. But it's good to see you know, my fellow brothers and sisters growing in that knowledge for themselves. The next thing now ones have to grow in is not just looking at these individual words, but let's put it together. Let's learn real Hebrew, right? Real Hebrew. When I say real Hebrew, I'm talking about real biblical Hebrew, the archaic Hebrew, but even today's Hebrew. I'm going to point that out to ones because a lot of ones say, oh, the Hebrew nowadays is Yiddish. Listen, most of them don't know Yiddish from, from British. <laughs> most of them don't know Yiddish from British. And we already proven this, you know, what they're doing is running off of somebody else's gas, you know, you know, get your own content and you know, study. Right. But it's good to see the growth that we're seeing, you know, so he, he does well with that part of his presentation. But he says he's not going to go outside of that. And then it's like he jumps out the window. Right. And he starts to say a lot of things against the black Madonna. Now, the black Madonna, even though he says nobody know who Jesus father was. And then he he starts to make all these kind of like um, I'm, he's like he's a scoffer. It's like like there he became a scoffer and a mocker. Now, we know that he's a he's an Old Testament. You know, he's an Old Testament only Israelite. We, we, we I think we heard him say that. You know, if we are wrong, we say, Slicha, Slicha, Na, Suna, forgive I and I, if that's not so. But for what we recall hearing is that he's an Old Testament Israelite. But there's other Old Testament Israelites and heal up ones like um, Abdiel ben Levi, Abdiel ben Levi, Brother uh, uh, Zion Lex. You know, he's touched on some interesting you know, New Testament studies and reasoning, and though it might not be his core belief, you know, as others might believe with the New Testament, you know, um, he still accurately was able to go into, you know, a teaching without being disrespectful, right? And disrespectful to a black woman, because a black Madonna is a black woman. I mean, the original, the original, not the whitewash, not the counterfeit, not the latter day, but the original is a black woman. So he begins off saying that he's defending the black woman and then he disses the black woman like she's a harlot, like a whore or something like that. And here's the interesting thing. It was other Old Testament Israelites in the New Testament that did the same thing, bro, that you did. Did the same thing. You really need to fall back on that. And this is my advice. No, you don't have to do, of course, you know, you're going to do what you want to do. You understand? But you really need to fall back. And Sarnetta gets credit for trying to bring out the truth. If you watch the video up to like maybe like the 45 minute mark, roughly around like the 40, 45 minute mark and hear what Sarnetta is saying concerning even with the Holy Spirit and it's not Joseph being the father, right? So he gets credit for trying to bring out the truth. But, right, Rob Rack from the beginning, he claims and he does in the early part of, of his presentation defend when we say the black woman or the 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 Israelite woman, right? The 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 Negro woman. And that's a part that we also very much agree based on the facts and the evidence. When we're talking about the Israelites, right, we see the Negro connection, right, to ethnic Israel, right, to the seed Israel, ethnic Israel, right? Or we say the blood Yehudi, black Jew, right, is connected with Right, that Negro, that Negro connection to say that black connection right there. Thus, when we look at like the so-called like 12 tribes charts, and we have to do something on the 12 tribe chart again to really show like people have asked the guy about the 12 tribe chart. They say, well, what do you think is true? We think that in this latter day, since the post-1970 AD Israelites is become falsified in the context of where it really originates from, it is true. Now, if you say, what does that mean? Well, let's point this out right here since we're, we're going to go into this. We're already into this right here. We're looking at a book called The Real Facts, The Real Facts About Ethiopia by J.A. Rogers. This is a document from 1936, right? 1936, The Real Facts About Ethiopia was written and published by J.A. Rogers in 1936, right? And in this document right here, 
there's a section near the end of it that says, how do the Ethiopians feel toward Afra Americans? Not African Americans, not that stuff that that um, you know, Jesse Jackson brought in and others brought in during the civil rat, the civil rat race, during the civil rat race generation. But no, the original way was Afro American. Afro American. The first ones to really identify us as black and we identify ourselves as black was ones like the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. Right? We look into the preamble, we the black people of the world. If you study the chronology of our people, that was 1937. Black would not become popular. Black people, it took them like 30 years, took us 30 years, the black people, 30 years by and large to get up their courage to say black is beautiful. But the first ones to identify ourselves beyond the colored, beyond the Negro, right, was the Ethiopian World Federation. So the Ethiopia connection, and when I say the Ethiopia connection, there's many tribes and many different peoples. We're talking about that 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 Judeo-Christian, or we're talking about the Israelite of Ethiopia, those who identify with Shem. Because remember that Amharic is an Afro-Hamito-Semitic language, like Hebrew is an Afro-Semitic language, and Ge'ez is a a, a original Semitic Shemitic language. Check. Right. You have to understand that. How can this Hamitic people? so-called, right, be speaking a Shemitic language. We're speaking about the Israelites of Ethiopia and that Solomon and Sheba connection right there, 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 and the 1,000 from each of the 12 tribes. So it was the son of Solomon and Sheba and 12,000 male Israelites that came in. And this is where we get further, that Afro-Shemitic, right? See, there were some peoples that we was told not to, right, not to. Right, not to um, breed with, in other words, especially those seven nations and the Canaanites, seven nations of Canaan. It was never we was told that about the Ethiopians, like some of the false teachers among some of the Latter-day Israelites teach. But here it says this, but the Ethiopians do not consider themselves Negroes. Now people say, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. see, at this time, the Ethiopians were being called Negroes in all of the documentation and evidence back then. Right, we even point to the Webster's Dictionary. We might be able to show that here. I think we have the slide to exhibit. Many Afro-Americans, like blacks over here, will say, this is true. Now, over this, listen, listen. It says, but the Ethiopians, talking about 1936, do not consider themselves Negroes. Many Afro-Americans will say, this is true. They object to the word, and so for that matter do many Afro-Americans. Many of us, even as Afro-Americans, Talking about our black people from back in like the 30s, right? We also rejected that as well. Marcus Garvey had the Universal Negro Improvement right, a, a, a Association, right? But then after that, right, we get what? The Ethiopian, right? The Ethiopian connection. Are you not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me or children of Israel? That's Amos 9 and 7. But it says, they object to the word why? And so do, and so for that matter, do many Afro-Americans. Not to mention, get this, listen, not to mention Afro-Americans south of the Rio Grande. Wait, hold on for a moment. South of the Rio Grande, where's that? You know where the Rio Grande is? You heard that tune, Mexican Divorce? Classic uh, Sanchez, Roots Reggae tune. No, Rio Grande is the Mexico. You have the Negro and the Negrita. You have the Moreno and the Morena. Very good documentary out there. Um, blacks in Latin America. I think Henry Louis Gates, he, he did that particular documentary. And there's one of the episodes that talk about how um, the, the, the white ruling elite or class down there was, was so um, fretted about having so many black people. Right at that time, about maybe like 70, almost a little less than 100 years ago, that they had called for a bunch of white men, Portuguese, Spanish, others, white men, right, from Europe to be brought in to fornicate with the black woman in order to create uh, what we have today, right? In order to, and it was watered down, right, that Negro, that black, right, that black uh, demographic, Right, and that actually happened. So when this document was written, the real facts about Ethiopia in 1936, and it says here that 
They object to the word, the Ethiopians, and many Afro-Americans, blacks over here, object to the Negro word. We know what it applies to, but, you know, that's a byword. Even the Bible point out the curses with disobedience is a byword. Not to mention the Afro-Americans south of the Rio Grande. South of the Rio Grande is Mexico. So when we look back, like, to the 30s and before, like the 30s, to the population, right, in many of the South American countries, what we had is a majority Negro people, black people, right, and the minority white rulers. But what happened? Well, what happens, what happened in, in, in the Blacks in Latin America documentary where it says that, I think it was in Brazil, Brazil, in Brazil, they imported a bunch of white men, you know, like Portuguese and Spanish white men to come over to um, South America and just to have sex. See, that's when they start to do these things like free love and free sex. You know, they, they, they do these things in, in, in the Gentile society. That is basically to, to, to change the demographic of the population, to water down, right, the Israelite, the black seed. And that occurred even in Mexico. So when they say like Yisakar, Yisakar, like Isachar, but really Yisakar, right, between the two burdens and all of that, that did apply to those Afro-Americans or those blacks south of the Rio Grande who do not use it. So check this out. There were black people in more of the majority in many of the South American countries about 100 years ago. What happened? Henry Louis Gates, uh, Blacks in Latin America. I'll, I'll try to get the episode. It's the episode where you talk about Brazil. Brazil, right, in Brazil, where they imported white men to come over and to, and to become a bunch of, bunch of um, baby fathers, so to speak. You basically breed up the black, the indigenous and black, and the Negro and the black, and also the, the um, we say the native, you know, those who are the natives over there, other than those who are brought over to um, South America to change the demographic. That's why it looks the way it looks today. That's why so many people are color struck and on this colorism today, this ism schism today, because many of their fathers was many of those white Spanish and white Portuguese that were brought over. Check. So right here, this book right here is very accurate when it points out that there were Afro-Americans south of the Rio Grande who did not use that terminology. But now for us, when we say, well, who's an Israelite? It's important, right, that we recognize the Israelites, the biblical Israelites, as Negro people, as black people, as a black seed people. Now, this doesn't mean that there was not, you know, mixing. We know there was mixing. The Bible talks about there was mixing, all sorts of mixing going on, right? But still, they were a black seed of people. Now, in some places, we got so watered down that we, as we got watered down, we lost power. I mean, even Shakespeare has the Othello thing, the Othello thing. See, the more, people talk this Moorish identity, and it's, it's not talking about the, 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 the Moors in the sense of Moorish science temple doctrine. It's talking about the Moors in real history doctrine. They called us Moors, black people in Europe, when they wanted to stop calling us Ethiopians, right, or Negroes. See, Negro comes from the Latin, the Roman, and Ethiopian comes from the Greek. This society that we're in, its roots is Greco-Roman, right? But now, after that, then they began to use the term more, right, as a byword on the people who formerly were known as Ethiopian and Negro and the majority of them being of the Israelite seed in Europe. Check. Just to point that out right there, I already gave a little bit of that as I was going to go into, you know, the chart. But that's a, that's a whole other video. Here we want to just zoom in on, once again, Rob Rack. You did a very good presentation. The first 45 minutes of presentation, very good. But a lot of what you started to say later on, maybe you was trying to make a point, you know, against maybe the Latter-day Christians with, with all of their um, counterfeit Christianity. But what you really did was you insulted a black woman. Right? You insulted the Madonna or this thing called Mariam. You, you, you insulted uh, just straight up right there. Sarnetta tried to save you. You know, I say try to save the point. He was about to say something, but then you just went on, right? But you claimed in the beginning to be defending the black woman, but then you diss 
right, the queen of the black woman or the queen of the Israelite woman. Now people say, well, how, how is this? But, 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 but Mary, it says that she had a, a baby of the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. And then he goes into all these jokes and all this scorn. It, it was scorn. It was scornful. Like, like Psalm 1 says about the scorner, right? And for some of us, it's like, wait, we know you were speaking right over here, but you spoke wrong over there because you went away from what you proclaimed in the beginning of your video. I mean, now it was my wife my Ishti that pointed this out to me. I said, wow, that's a chance. I mean, I probably would have gotten across to it. Maybe, maybe not. I think I would. But she pointed that out. As a woman, she picked up on like, wait, you say you're defending black woman, but then you go against her because you say, well, you was right to say that Joseph is not the father. But then when you say the Holy Spirit, you say it could be any old Joe. Now, for being an Old Testament Israelite, you know the Holy Spirit is in the Old Testament. Come on now, need we go to, oh, we have to go to Psalm, what is it, Psalm 51? Need we go to Psalm 51? <laughs> we go to Psalm 51, the Holy Spirit is right there, and also elsewhere in the Old Testament, even in the translation, the Holy Spirit is right there. Now, Robain, our rabbi, the rabbi of rabbis, our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, he points out that, you know, um, a slander or insult, you know, can be forgiven against the father, insult, slander can be forgiven against the son, but not against the Ruach Hak Adosh, against the Holy Spirit. This is why we're saying it, bro. Right? You could take it, you could leave it, but in dissing, right, saying you're defending black woman, and he was, he did, he did in the first part, you know, saying that all these ones want to marry all these strange women and wives and brought the scripture to back it up right there, right? But then getting to New Testament, to kind of make his Old Testament only point, it became disingenuous because even in the New Testament scripture, we still are dealing with black Israelites or black, more correctly, black Judahites because Israel, the 10 tribes, as the 10 tribes, they already had went into captivity from the time of, you know, going back to the Syrian king, right? And, and we could look at the Old Testament right there. So it's because of that Old Testament orientation and some of that zeal. We think that is zeal. He was a little overzealous. Right? But he did pretty good. He did very good. Right? Like we said, and we keep to our statement that he blew up their bunker. <laughs> you know, that false doctrine, the seed of the fall of the bunker. But he could have also pointed out clearly what the scripture says concerning the seed, right? The seed. Right, of the woman. And it says so. I, I, Captain Azania, if you, if you check this out from ISUPK, you know we had on, um, on Brother Lawrence's broadcast, we went through that as well. Where I point out the seed, you said the seed of the father. The seed is only of the father. I say, hold up for a moment. Right here in the scripture, it talks about the seed of the mother. The seed of the mother. Hold on for a moment right here, y'all. Let's just go through this right here because maybe some are not able to get it. But maybe you can get this right here. Okay, let's do this right here. Seed, right? And let's put woman. Seed of the woman. So ones will be able to see this for themselves. Right? Okay, let's go. Boom, right there. Right? It's, it's Genesis 3 and 15. It says, and I will put enmity. Enmity. What's enmity? Enmity is like hard feelings. Hatred is the word aba. Aba. Right? Aba. Aba. Hatred. Aba. Hostility. Aba. From Ayab. Right? And we say Oyeb. Oyeb is like an enemy, one who's hostile, one who's an enemy, in the sense of one who hates, right? In a hostile sense, you know what I mean? Um, like enemy combatant, right? I will put enmity between thee. Now, who, who's, who is speaking? Who's being spoken to here? Right? Who is speaking to? Well, who is speaking here is Yahweh Elohim, right? It's Hashem the Elohim, right? He who be who he be, the Elohim. He is speaking to the Nahash, the Nahash, the serpent, right? Concerning the woman, right? Concerning Hawa or, or Eva or Eve or Zoe as in some translation as she's called. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, right? And the Isha, the Isha. Look right there, Isha. You see Isha? Isha, let me just make this point too right here. Isha is from Ish. You see Ish, right? You're on all that Ish, Ish. Ish. So get out of saying, oh, Jew Ish. The Ish is just Ish like it's English. They're looking at it in a in a half original mind, as as the nation of gods and earth would say, in a half original mind. And we look at this in the original mind, we know that Ish means the higher man. 
but we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later. Let's get through this right here. And between thy seed, so, so who's being spoken to right here? Here, the Nahash, the serpent, between thy seed and her seed. Do, do you see that here? <laughs> Wanted to do like what Rob Rackard did. He's like, oh, maybe, maybe um, I don't know how to read. Maybe I don't know what I'm, I'm saying right here. What does it say? And he even asked Sarnetta, but I'm asking you, what does it say right here? It says her seed. Uh-oh. Do you notice that it's the H2233? H2233. It's the very same word between thy seed, right? between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. Let's go. Let's go right here. Let's go right here. Let's let's bring this up right here. All right, let's bring this up. Let's compare. Let's go to the Hebrew. Now, it, like we say, it's good that ones are going to the strong concordance, but sometimes to get the right context, you you have to read. You have to really, you know, grow your Hebrew. Maybe this is a, a way for ones and ones to begin. Here, here we go right here. It says, Weaba, Weaba, Ashit, Benika. U bain ha isha. Okay, this this is first part right here. Here's the part that we're reading right here, right? Because see, sometimes the individual words, right? The individual words you can get an idea of it, but sometimes more of the context comes out, right? When we can now read and put it together, right? And another point was interesting too, where it said like the seed. Because a lot of the Israelite, the, the return Judahite, the return Yehudi, because they were Yehudi, right? There was, remember, the separation of the northern kingdom from the southern kingdom. Northern ten tribes went into exile, never to come back. The southern kingdom, a remnant, came back, right, after 70 years. Different. That's why the, the term Jews is used in the New Testament to refer to the Judeans, the Yehudi, the remnant of the tribes of Judah, of Benjamin, Benjamin, Yaman, right? Benjamin, as well as Levi, as Levi, and a few remnants of a few others that were, you could say, under the umbrella of Yehuda that gathered together to Yehuda. It's like we North American Negroes, Judah. That's why we see all the different, you know, tribes coming up here, even from Africa coming over here. But here it says, Weba Ashit, Weba, Eba. Eba is the hostile, hostility, the enmity. Weba, reading from right to left, Weba Ashit. Ashit means like I will set, right? I will set. Bain Neka, Bain Neka, Bain Neka. Bane. Bane is to say like son, in that sense to say child, but directly son. Benecha, benecha. Ancient pointing, benecha. Right? Modern pointing, benecha, benecha. Between ka, the ka, the ha at the end, the ka is speaking to an individual male. So I'm talking to a man and I say, um, um, you know, um, you know, mashalom ha benecha. I said, well, how is your, how is your son? Like saying, how is your son, in that sense? Your male son, I'm speaking to a man. So here is bringing out that the Nahash, in this context, even though there's some gender bending when we start to read the Hebrew, it's interesting, right, with, the, with this particular um, um, serpent, right? <laughs> so nothing new under the sun. So a lot of the trans things going on now, and then we look at what was going on in the garden when we get into the real Hebrew science. But Benaka is saying, your seed, speaking to the Nahash, the serpent. U Bain, U Bain, and the Bain and the sun, the seed, Implied the male seed, Haisha, and the and the son of the Isha, right? So between your son, right, your son, right, and the son of the woman, Haisha, right. But it doesn't stop there. Let's go on right here. We're gonna we're gonna go to this part right here, right. We're gonna go to this part right here, right. Let's go to this part. Um, Right here. This is part right there. That part that's highlighted. Right? Here it says Ubain, right? And the and the and and, and between. Now see there's two banes. I have to point this out. There's two banes. Right? One bane, see it's with context. It sounds the same, but when you hear it in the context, one bane means between. So Ubain here means between Zar Eka, Zar Eka, Zar E, Zar E, Zar Eka, Zar Eka, Zar Eka, and between your seed, your Zar, 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 
right? Your zar, zar, right? Your sea. Here, speaking to the nahash, the serpent, speaking to the serpent as though the serpent is is like male in gender. Ubain, right? Zar, zarah. Ubain zarah. Ubain zaraha. Zaraha, if you need to emphasize ha, ha, ha at the end brings out her, right? Zaraha, zaraha, zarah, zaraha, and between her seed. Now, the word for seed right here, let's just highlight this part right here. This is the root part without the, the suffix, right? That part right there, see, now here's how we just prove it right down here. Let's go down here and let's click on this right here. So here, if you read it from the transliteration, is zera, zera, right? But zar, zara, 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 right? Not it's an ain, and the ain has a hard a sound. Get off that paleo, that paleo, that pseudo pseudo Hebrew, that paleo Hebrew. The only thing that's correct about paleo Hebrew is an older way. It's a different font type. Besides Paleo Hebrew being a different font type, all the other kind of speculations, it just keeps you in bad Hebrew. Reminds me of the fact that many of the returned Israelites, they had foreign wives. And those who had like foreign mothers, what did it say? That they could not speak the language. <laughs> Uh-oh. They couldn't speak the language, right, of Yehudit, the Yehudit, right? See, Hebrew has to do with not our Hebrew has to do with our spirituality. Let me just put that here on the table. Hebrew has to do with the spirituality, right? Not the physicality. Once again, Hebrew has to do with the spirituality, not the physicality. So a lot of ones got it wrong on what Hebrew, you know, saying black Hebrew is kind of redundant in a sense. You know what I mean? But be that as it may, the word here, zara, zera, 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 right? Seed, you see seed, sowing, seed, sowing. You see what it says, seed, a sowing, seed. Then it has semen in the male sense, semen, virile, offspring, descendants, posterity, children, right? The word can be used according to the second of the two truths in Hebrew. We have the literal, right, and the figurative type. We have the earthly and the heavenly type. We have the outer and the inner type. We have the physical and the metaphysical type, the two truths of the Hebrews. So in the second of the truths of moral quality, practitioner of righteousness in the figurative sense, sowing time, so forth and so on. But what's very clear right here, right, when we look at the Strong's definition right here, that seed, we have seed of from, now here, this is Zara. See, 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 Zara, Zara. Zara is the verb, and zera, 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 zera is the noun. Zara, zara is the verb. So some would say that there's only one or two vowels in Hebrew. That's all fake. That's all false too, right? Hebrew has seven primary vowels, right? Seven primary vowels, and the Ethiopic is, is the matrix key. The Ethiopics is the matrix key. Let me just put that on the on the beamer right there. So here we have the verb, zara, right? To sow, to scatter seed. So both can be used like in farming, agricultural sense, right? Also it says to be pregnant or to be with child, to be with seed, right? You know, to produce seed. So it can apply to the land as well as to the, the man and the woman. The land and the man and the woman, according to its context. In fact, the land usually is feminine within the Hebraic science of the language and the double helix science of the language. So it makes sense like a farmer puts seed into the ground and he tends it and he grow crop and, you know, the man puts seed into the woman, so forth and so on. So there is a seed of the man. Right? Let's not make no mistake about it. A primitive root to sow, figuratively to disseminate. Disseminate. Like disseminate knowledge is like to sow the seed. Right? That's why Robeno, our rabbi, Yeshua HaMoshiach, he pointed out the parable of the sower. Remember the parable of the sower? To sow seed. So he was using a literal parable in a figurative sense to disseminate. Right? Like to inseminate, disseminate. You get it? Plant, fructify. But see, if you have a real carnal mind, you're going to focus on one side of it and you're not going to be able to see the other side of it because you've got the five foolish virgins. You don't have the wise virgins. To bear, to conceive seed, to set with, to sow, to yield. 
So boom. So right here, just to prove this right here, that there is a seed of the woman. How come nobody talks about the seed of the woman? <laughs> See, this is what we get manifest in this dingulmarium, kadismarium, right? In kadismarium. So instead of just sticking to the script, right, he could just say that, well, the Holy Spirit is, but then, you know, Rob Rack, he kind of went off right there. And it was kind of good that right after that, he ended his presentation, you know, but that, that has a lot to do with his, like, Old Testament orientation, Old Testament only orientation. I understand it because even I self years ago had to, you have to get to the foundation. So I understand why many ones have to just strip away all the counterfeit Christianity and just get to the basic Torah and build up from there, right? But the Brit Chadasha or the renewed covenant, you got to see it when you're mature enough to overstand the Old Testament. Right? And it's obvious by going against the, the Ruach HaKadosh or the Holy Spirit as he did. That's where Saneta was coming in trying to say something, but it was your presentation and he let you speak. Right? And there it's like um, you, 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 um, you uh, missed the mark right there. You missed the mark. You might not agree because you're Old Testament only and you have, I guess, another... another um, thing to do and everything but i hope that you do rob rack because you really blew the bunker at least on the first part of the presentation but we can use the first part of the presentation to show that your second part of your presentation at least the part about this in Glamadium, about about saint mary and then going into who knows who the father was probably was this and that I, we know where you're getting that from <laughs> you know what i mean but don't eat off of too many different plates like that Right? It's almost like sowing your seed amiss. Right? You disseminate a very good word in the beginning, and then it's like you misfired or whatever later on. But anyway, anyway, just to share that, one of I and I brother was and says, like, yeah, he was out of pocket, out of pocket, right, against the mother Adonano. You know, you know how it is, even in the black community, and if we, the black Jews and the Yehudi and the Israelites are black people, you know how it is, you, go, you start talking about somebody's mother. Right? I mean, and, and you have no cause here. In fact, what you could have done is when you started to say all those things, you could say, well, that may be one of the things that Joseph, no doubt, was thinking this. Like, you know, she was already with child before, you know, we came together and he was thinking about putting away privily. Maybe this was his thoughts, but the way you brought that out was like your own thoughts. And talking about you defending, you know, the black, is the Israelite woman who is the black woman. Right in your estimation and how you brought it forward, and we also agree with that. These are some basic facts. That's so why we're only putting this here just to be, you know, be thorough, right? But overall, it was a good presentation. But that part, we, you know, we don't we don't check for that open rebuke is better than secret love, and let this be like an open rebuke on that part. Even if you don't take the rebuke, at least you can say that you know your brother your brothers didn't warn you. On that right there. You were really out of pocket, you know, on that. But the other present, you know, the rest of the presentation was still on point. That, that, that doesn't take away from the, it does take away from the other presentation because you can't say you're here to defend the black woman, here to defend the black woman because a lot of these black Israelites are marrying all these strange women, so forth and so on. And now we get a black Israelite woman who the scripture testifies, right, was of the seed of the Holy Spirit. And then you want to deny that i mean do you know any different if you're just sticking with the bible you say you're going to stick with the bible what's in the bible right you're going to stick with the bible only time you can go outside of the bible is like the strong's concordance just to bring out the word you know so it can get the proper context of meaning but when you got to the new testament part you know it was it was it was, it was sloppy as uck you know what i mean you know basically right there it, it was a trespass you trespass like me just talking about your mama Right? Because I heard some stuff, whatever. But if she says that's how it happened, that's how it happened. Why should I speak against it? If anybody speak against it, right, your mama, it should be your papa. Right? You know, because he has a cause. Like, so Joseph, he was thinking to put, out, put away privily because he didn't know what was going on here until the angel, even that's what Sarnetta was saying. But it was the angel who said, Yeah, that's right. I was trying to say this. You know, he was trying to bring it out. But then, you know, you kind of, um, did what you did. But anyway, overall, still a very good presentation. I recommend this to others. You know, in I and I Chabarim, I and I Circle, right there, there, there. Going to touch on a little bit more right here, here, here. But for right now, 
Yeah, so right here, right here, right here, as you can see right here, yeah, it was around 8.31 or so. I was checking it out. No, let's go to this right here. Yeah, it's not true. So you can see we was a 370th thumb upper, right? Thumb upper, right? Right there. Like Rob Rack, his Rob Rack's presentation. That's the full title right there. In case others want to check it out, right? Presents the seed of the Father is a false doctrine, right? I'll say the seed of the Father only, but the seed of the Mother matters. The seed of the Mother matters. Um, but before we before we, before we just fulfill right here, let's go back to this right here. And those who want to use this software, we're using my sword, my sword, my sword. Um, couldn't speak the language. Let's look up language, right? Language of the Jews, language of the Yehudi, right? Let's just go to this right here, right here. Now, this is a couple of places right here. Now, the language of the Jews was the language of the southern tribe. So Hebrew, as it comes down to us today, it comes from the Yehudit, the southern tribe speech of Hebrew. Not the Israelites, the northern tribes were already gone. They, they began, you know, they were lost, right? The ten tribes. Not talking about the ten tribes, right? We're talking about those tribes that even clearly today we can still identify through that black sea. Here it says, uh, speak I pray thee to thy servants in the Syrian language. Now the Syrian language connects more with um, what ones might call Seretic today. Seretic, right? Or even Aramaic. Check. A lot of people be talking about all this Aramaic, Aramaic, Aramaic. You know, some other stuff right there. But the scripture kind of, you know, shows you. It says, speak, I pray thee in the language. And speak, I pray thee to thy servants in the Syrian language. The Syrian language. Let's go there. The Aramit. The Aramit. The Aramit. Right? The Aramit. The Aramit is basically, you know, East Coast, West Coast dialects. The Aramit, or you know, like... um like like American Jamaican dialect, you know, like it's 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 that kind of separation, but more like East Coast West Coast, right? So here it says, for we understand it, and talk not with us in the Yehudi language. Check you check that right there. Now what's the what's the Jews language? The Jews language is Yehudit, Yehudit. So the next point that hopefully ones when they learn it for themselves, they might go on and to present a presentation or elsewhere, and others will get to know it too, that. The language we call Hebrew, it's not really according to the scripture called Hebrew. Hebrew has to do with spirituality, one's spirituality, one's spiritual consciousness, by right? crossing over from the idolatrous worship to the true way, Jah, Yah, true way, and life. The Yehudit, the Yehudit is what the language is called because it was only the tribe of Judah. Only Judah only was left. Need to bring up that scripture for y'all that Judah only was left. Now amongst Judah was Benjamin, right? So all this Yankee Yardy stuff is ridiculous, right? You'll come up here, North America, the wilderness, Judah, right? You're Benjamin, Ben Yaman, Jaman, Yaman, right? So we're one tribe, but it's Yehuda. It says Judah, you are he who your brethren shall praise. Check. So the Yehudi is the language. It's just like right now, like how black people in America. Right? We speak a certain way. We say ain't, 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 ain't. People tell them that ain't, ain't in the dictionary. But now ain't is in the dictionary. You know? We say, what's up, my nigga? Nigga, nigga, nigga. Now everybody want to say nigga. Right? You know, they listen to the hip hop or whatever of Yehuda, of Judah up here. And everybody want to be like that. All the black people, even the, the other Gentile nations want to be like that. That's what the Yehudit was with the Hebrew. Right? What's called Hebrew. Yehudit. Right? Yehudit. Right? In the Jewish, see, they say Jewish, but people get it confused. Because Ish means man in Hebrew. And Yehudi contracted is, you know, where they get the Jew from. Right? But really, it's the language to call Yehudit. Yehudit. Right? They should really say the Judah, the tribe of Judah, tribe of Judah, tribe of Judah, the tribe of Judah language. Right? They say in the Jews' language, in the Judah language. It should be in the Judah language. Right? In the Yehudi, the Yehudi. Yehudi is how we refer to somebody who is a Judahite. Yehudi, that's my homie. Yes, that's my Yehudi. Hood, hood, hood. You know, you see the hood? Don't you see hood in Yehudi? <laughs> Don't you see hood in Yehudi? I mean, I mean, 
you, you want more evidence to prove that so-called Negroes in black America over the 400 years are the remnant tribes in exile of the tribe of Judah? The, the hood, right? A hood, Yehuda, Yehud, right? See, these things come out in our DNA, right? Whether we're conscious of it or not, right? So that ones who are conscious of it, like I and I, can then explain the scriptural connections. Strong's definition, patronymic from the H3063, a Judahite, a Yehudahite, a Judahite, right? A Judahite, a Judahite. You see how it's spelled in two different ways, but it's still pointing the same thing. Or a Jew, right? Jew is just like abbreviation. You know, like, like something being abbreviated. Like we don't say nigger, right? We say nigga, nigga. That's abbreviation. It's a shortening, right? It's not really, you know, it's broken off from the, the older word. Like Jew is broken off from Yehudite, Judahite, or descendant of Yehuda, Jehuda, Hood, the Hood, right? Descendant of those in the Hood, right? And it means praise. Judah, Yehuda doesn't mean Jah praise. Stop it. Learn Hebrew, man. Get off of that. It doesn't mean Jah praise. Right? It has the Yod, the Yod is in the, the Hashem, in the Yahweh, right? in the YHWH, but that's not what it means there. That's not what it means there. Right? Now notice right here, just to prove the point, son of Jacob by Leah, uh, the tribe descendant from, from Judah, the son of Jacob. The territory occupied by the tribe of Judah, like we talk about blacks, North America, right? North American Negro, the, the territory. This territory, East Coast, West Coast, you know, Midlands, down south, Louisiana, New Orleans, all over, N niggas, right? Okay, so we have four, the kingdom, the kingdom comprised of the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, which occupied the southern part of Canaan, right? As we've been given that land from the conquering line of the tribe of Judah in the south, the southern part, right, of the Canaan, after the nation split, upon the death of Solomon. And in the video, Rob Wright going into the false doctrine of the seed of the father, that false doctrine right there, right? He also explains what Solomon did, right? And this is what makes the connection now, right? With the queen of the south, the queen of Sheba, right? Machida, the queen, or Ida. Ida is how we call her from an Israelite perspective, but she's known in that land as, you know, Machida. And even Robenu Ainai Rabbi Yeshua HaNotri, right, Jesus of Nazareth, in the New Covenant scripture, he even points out, no sign will be given to this wicked, this ratchet generation, other than the sign of Yonah or Jonah. And he points out the queen of the south shall rise in the judgment against this generation because she came from the far, uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Shlomo and the greater than Solomon is here. So, we can see why the Kevrnegas testimony, why we get this connection with, you know, the Ethiopian Hebrew and the Israelites of Ethiopia because of what Solomon was do done doing, right? And the and some of the lying ISUBK and other Israelites try to say, and 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 the and the and the Ethiopian, it doesn't mention the Ethiopian, none of those lists of the woman that one should not marry. Otherwise, you try to smack Moses in the face. Even Captain Azania tried to say in that broadcast, oh, it's when Moses like didn't know what he was doing when he married the Ethiopian woman. I said, you sound just like Miriam. You sound like just Miriam. You better watch it. Leprosy may be coming, right? A Levite in Ezra's time was called Judah, right? An overseer in Jerusalem in the time of Nehemiah, Nehemiah, a Levite musician in the time of Nehemiah, a priest in the time of Nehemiah. Now, Ezra and Nehemiah, they were ones who returned. There was a lot of other ones who stayed out in Babylon. All right, so we compare that with the Shashamani land grant given by the King of Kings upon the throne of Great King David to the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, so forth and so on. Remember of the 12 pioneers, there was 10 Benjamites and 2 Judahites. Strong's definition, the meaning of Yehuda means celebrated. It means praised. He's the praised one. Right? He's the praised one. And the most praised one, some people don't like this, among all the Negroes or blacks, is this North American Negro. Right? I mean, even ones like Garvey, he was deserving initially of some praise and everything. He had to, he had to leave Jamaica. He had to leave the Jakes and come up here to really get that praise up here in the wilderness, being that voice crying out in the wilderness before he lost his head. Right? But here, here, here. 
right? To give praise, to give thanks, to give praise, to give thanks, to give praise, to give thanks. It also can mean yada. Yada means to stretch forth the hand, right? To stretch forth the hand. So there's two main meanings in Judah and Yehuda. One is the praise, the celebrated one, the one who's praised, like the celebrity, right? Is Judah, like the so-called black American Negro. He's a celebrity. You know, and the others won't need to get some celebrity status. Other blacks from the Caribbean or wherever, they got to come over here and get that celebrity, right? But it also means, Yehuda means to stretch forth the hand. To stretch forth the hand. <laughs> you know, like put hands on, right? So here, Rob Shaka, Rob Shaka, he stood and he cried with a loud voice in the Yehudi language, right? So we see this right here. And spake saying, hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. He was on some boasting stuff right here. But here's the part right here. Nehemiah, Nehemiah, Nehemiah 13, 24. And their children spake half the speech of Ashdod. Ash what? Ashdod. What's, what, what the hell is the Ashdod? Right? Ash, Ashdodit. Ashdodit, which could mean in the Hebrew, I will spoil. Ashdod. It's some, that's not our people there. And notice what it says next. And could not speak the Yehudit. They could not speak the Yehudit. The ancient biblical Hebrew, as ones might call it. They could not speak the Yehudit. It's like ones that Lashan Kadash, they cannot speak the Yehudit either. Right? And it's interesting, they don't speak the Yehudit in the Lashan Kadash, and then they're the ones that false doctrine about marrying all these strange women. Ooh. But according to the language of each people, you see that? But according to the language of each people. And here's where Isha Shali had brought out this point right here. Because I think furthermore it says, right, it says down here, right, the outlandish woman from Solomon. So it's because they were speaking the language of their mothers. See how important the seed of the woman? So there's a seed of the man and there's a seed of the woman check check so that connection with those who could not speak the language right those who could not speak the language you know of um those who could not speak the language of the of the yehudi they, they can speak the judahite language in other words they can speak that ancient hebrew language so that means that even when the judahite men marry these foreign women Right? That's so all when we, we, we did a video, I think it's up on this channel, you can check it out, about Burhan Salasi, Bob Marley, right? And based on the, um, you know, some say you are what your father is, but it's also, you, there's a teaching that you're a Jew if your mother's a Jew. Some people don't understand that. Some of them are not quite able to really, because they really don't understand some of these basic stuff in the King James translation. You know what I mean? Much less the Hebrew and everything. That based on your mother, based on these ones who married all these foreign women, this is where that teaching and doctrine also come from. That our sages who looked and reviewed what is written in the scriptures say how interesting is that many of them could not speak, you know, many of them could not speak the language of, 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 of the Judahites, right, of the Yehudi, and many of these men had married all these foreign women, right? these women of these other ites, Canaanites, Moabites, Ashdodites. In fact, let, let, let's, just, let's just get this right here, if we can get this right here. Right? Language of each people. I think it comes on the people. Right? Let's see. Language of each people. Esther. No, I think it's before Esther. Let's see right here. Esther. Let's see, language of each people. Okay, I know it's in it's in Ezra. Hold on for a quick moment right here. We're gonna sum up right here. Didn't intend for this to be so long right here, but it gotta be what it be right here. Because it's important. It's the last chapter. It's the last chapter. Right here. They're taking strange wives. Right? They had taken these strange wives. I think it says something in here concerning like, yeah, how they could not speak. It's because of the strange wives. Yes, yeah, in Ezra chapter 10. Ezra chapter 10. Because of the strange wives, what Nehemiah is saying here in Nehemiah chapter 13, 24, this connects with what Ezra right, says. Because Ezra and Nehemiah is the same time period. right? 
what Ezra says in Ezra chapter 10. Ezra chapter 10, right? In Ezra chapter 10, um, because of the strange woman. So isn't it interesting that even the seed of the father seems to have little, little effect, right, on the fact that their mother, so what we're trying to say is that the mother's influence, the mother's influence is very important, right? Because it's pointing out that they had taken wives of all these other people, and just as even like Solomon had his wives, and they, after long duration, I guess just, just, just nagging him or whatever it was, he allowed them to worship their, their idols in Jerusalem, built these high places, right? So that's what I'm trying to say about the seed of the woman. People will say the seed is only of the man, like the woman have no you know, effect on it. And this is where the teaching, and this is prior to the white Jews. Let me just say that right here, prior to the European Jews, right? That this doctrine, you know, that you are Yehudi if your mother's a Jew, because that derives from this narrative right here, where it says that they could not speak the Yehudi language, but each according to language of like the particular people. So if a Israelite man had a, a woman from one of these ites right here, like he had one of the Canaanites, right, the Hittites, Perizzites, or Jebusites, right, that the children came up by right, speaking the language of their mother tongue, because mother tongue matters. I'm just going to send you all on the research, those who are interested in this. Look up the, the, the idea of mother tongue. Like, what is your mother tongue? Your mother tongue matters. Your mother tongue matters. You know what I mean? Like, for example, if one's mother is a, a, a Kushite, you will maybe say a Sibolet. If your mother is a, a Shemite, right, or, or Israelite of Shem in that sense, you probably would say Shibolet because there are certain ways we enunciate, we bend light with our word sound that other tribes or other peoples do not. Mother tongue matters because the mother is the first teacher of the children. Another point too is that when they say if your mother is a Yehudit, if your mother is a Jew, then you're a Jew. This means that your mother, right, okay, a daughter who, 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 who honors her father, Right? Even though maybe she might marry a man that is not of her father's tribe, for example, right? And that was basically even permissible in old Israel, you know, and only with the woman who had inheritance, like the daughters of Zelophe had, were they encouraged to marry within their own tribe, right? So that the inheritance, land rights doesn't get confused and it cause like tribal war and everything else. So that means that since they were told they had to marry somebody in their own tribe, I think of the tribe of Manasseh, Manasseh, right? So that the inheritance, since they were inheritors, since the father had no sons, it would go along, you know, stay, the, the land would stay in the tribe because they marry some man from Judah and he now is there. He's going to claim this land for Judah and then there's going to be a tribal war over that land that was allotted to that particular tribe. So that means that woman, therefore, conversely and vis a vis, could marry outside of their tribe. But if they love their father, like say a Yehudi woman, a Judahite woman, that even if she marries a foreign man, and this has been proven even with the so-called white Jews, just to prove the point of the teaching and the ideology when you truly accept it as true, right, will do things to make that child a Yehudi. <laughs> if you understand what I'm saying. And if you don't want to accept that, then just accept the fact that what Ezra and Nehemiah is testifying to, that because they had married all of these women, of these other tribes, right, that their children, remember it was Judahite men, we could say black men, let's say like black men and all these foreign women, right, that the influence of the mother is powerful. Let, let's just point that out. Thus, we go back to our point about the seed of the woman, right, the seed of the woman, because some of these ain't right Israelites are trying to make it seem like there's only the seed of the father. And that section in, in, in Numbers chapter 1 
has to do with those who would inherit land after putting in the fight for the land. That's what that, that was taking the sum of those who would fight. That was not proven who was an Israelite, but who would fight. And therefore, you know, basically that was the way they would inherit that land according to their patriarchs. They had to prove that they were of those patriarchs. That was not a general consensus to prove everybody in Israel as like who was an Israelite. And Rob Rack made a good point in his presentation, you know, at the beginning of that right there. So right here, here, here. Give thanks, Rob Rack, also Sarnetta, you know, um, and also that point that Sarnetta, you know, that he was going to make, would have loved to hear the full of full of the point. But what we heard, you know, what we heard him say, you know, even from what he did say, really seemed to um, prove, you know, what we would say, you know what I mean? And what the Bible basically says, that point that Rob Rack said that they could have put Joseph with the father of Yeshua. They didn't, right? He mentioned about the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost, right? Sarnetta came in to say something, and then he went off on the scoffing, the scorning, and mocking, right? And point, you're mocking somebody's mother, right? Well, you're mocking the mother of Adonai, of our master, of Robeno, you know what I mean? But just think about it, how we even today feel about that. Right? Like if like my father, my earthly father said this to me, God bless his soul, may he rest in grace, rise in glory. My earthly father said something to me one time. He said, She was my wife before she was your mother. <laughs> right, you know, which was basically saying that, you know, even in that relationship, I gotta recognize, okay, she's my mother. So if anybody has something to say about, like, say, my mother. You know what I mean? Like in the family or whatnot. And you're Israelite, I'm Israelite, you know, we family, Judahite, you're Judahite, right? Negro, Negro, yeah? Right? It would be the father. So you should have made those statements, those points, that maybe this was what Joseph was thinking when he was thinking to put away privily. But then going so far to say other things, since the script said, you say you're going to stick to the script, you went off script right there at the end of the presentation. But otherwise, you know, well, besides that, right there, we just bun that part right there. But the other part of the presentation was good. And also um, credit to Sarnetta for what he did say and what he was about to say there. Check it out, brothers and sisters. It's been 90 minutes right here. So here, 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 you know, to the brothers and sisters, Shabbat Shalom, Sembet Salam, and Shabbat Tov, and yes, I, all of that, which is good in the King of Kings and his Christ, Shuha Moshiach. Shalom, Chabarim, Shalom. This is Wendem Ras Yadin. This is Yadin here. Here, here, here.